everyone, Tess from the Arty Crafty Place here and I wanted to film a little video to talk through my block printing table setup. Now I know some of you at home might have slightly different equipment to me but it's always really nice to know what I'm printing with so that you can get the same equipment at home. Obviously I do a lot of block printing and I found that this setup and the materials and kind of um, equipment I'm using is definitely the best to use and I'm going to show you different ways that I use the different equipment that we supply. So I wanted to talk through each piece of equipment that we use and why we use it so that you can also work out at home what it is that you need for your printing project. So first of all, one of the most important pieces of equipment is your foam printing mat. Now, we use this because you need something soft to print on, and that's due to the nature of the wooden printing blocks. They're not always totally flat. So when you print, you want to be able to wiggle them side to side, up and down, to get all the edges so that you get a really good print. Now, if you're printing straight on a hard surface like a table, you're not going to be able to wiggle it. So we use something soft. So that's why we have foam printing mats. Now, you could use something kind of equivalent to this at home. If you've got an old yoga mat or camping mat, that also does work, especially if it's a smooth one. That will give you that padded surface you need. You could try using a towel or newspaper, but I have found before that doesn't give me a very flat surface. So we sell these foam printing mats, and this is our A3 foam printing mat, and I have taped two together to give me a nice big surface area. And this is big enough for me to print wrapping paper on, it's big enough for me to lay my tea towel out on, so it's just a really good size to use. So we do have several sizes. I've decided to tape two A3 ones together just because it gives me a nice wide surface. And I did have a question the other day which makes a lot of sense. Is um, I've taped mine with masking tape and then somebody asked which side you print on. Is it the, the side that's not taped or the side that's taped? Now I'd always suggest printing on the side that's taped. You want to make sure they're really pushed together closely before you tape them so there's no gap. Because if you do have a gap in between them, it may give you an uneven surface to print on. So like I said, that really is the most important piece of equipment really to be using when you're printing, is a soft mat to print onto. Then the next piece of equipment I've got is my paint tray. Now we just sell a couple of sizes of paint trays. This is our large paint tray, which I feel fits six colours on really easily. We do have a smaller one which uh, fits four colours on. I put one in each colour and then two in the middle and that just gives me enough space to have my sponges in there and for the colours not to blend together. And these really wash easy just with hot soapy water after you've used them and then you can just dry them off and use them again. And then we've got a couple of different sponges which I'm going to show you later you know, which one I use for what sort of printing. But we've got our square um, foam sponges, and these are really useful for everyday block printing. And then I've got my sponge dabbers. Now we sell a pack of four, and they've got um, four different sizes in. And these are really good for more detailed printing, which I'm gonna show you later. And then I've got some paints. So the paints I'm gonna be using today, are I've got some acrylic paints to show you using, and some fabric paints. But those are really simple bits of equipment that everyone will use for block printing. These are staple items that you need to make sure you have at home as it's gonna make your printing so much easier. So that's foam printing mat, a paint tray and sponges. So I've zoomed in a little bit so you can really see what I'm doing. And I'm just gonna show you a couple of different ways that we apply paint. So onto my paint tray, I'm gonna pour out some acrylic paint first. Now I tend to use acrylic paints when I'm printing onto paper and cards. So especially at the moment with Christmas coming up, I'm using a lot of acrylic paint. And I use acrylic paint on paper and card because it really shows up nice and bright when you're printing. But you can kind of use any paints you have at home, any poster paints or anything. Now, what we're going to do is this block, I'm just going to print in one colour. So I'm going to use my square flat sponge just to apply the paint all over. So I'm going to dip the sponge in the paint, tap off the excess. And that's really important when you're printing is to make sure you don't have any big blobs on your sponge. If you go straight in the paint, and then you get a big blob and then onto the block, you're just gonna fill it up with paint and you'll get a splodge. So make sure you tap it off. And when using the square sponges, you want to make sure that the entire bottom has got paint on. Sometimes we can be a bit precious and just get paint on the corner, but you want to get the whole thing soaked in paint so that you're gonna have a nice coverage of paint on your block. So my sponge is all painty. 
and I'm going to lightly tap all over. And with this flat sponge, I'm just able to get a really nice coverage of paint all over the block. And then I'm going to turn it upside down and give it a wiggle. So side to side, up and down, and I can really feel that my foam printing mat is helping. It's allowing me to wiggle the block and then up. And there we have it, a really beautiful clear print. So you can see for this one, I use the square sponge. Now let's have a go with this one. This is a star. Again, I'm just doing all in one colour. So I'm going to use my square sponge again, as it just is really quick and easy to get a good coverage of paint on there. So turn upside down, give a wiggle, and then up. Again, a really nice print. Now, something a bit more detailed where your sponge dabbers might come into play. So what we're going to do here, I'm going to get a little bit more paint onto my tray. It's always good to have less out and then you can top it up. Is I'm going to do the bottom of my tree one colour and then I'm going to do the star a different colour. So this is where it becomes a bit more detailed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my sponge dabber for this. So first of all, I'm going to put the red paint all on the bottom because this is a large area. I'm just going to use my sponge, tap it all over. And then because it has straight edges, I can be quite precise with where I put the paint. So I'm just going to very carefully top the paint, uh, tap the paint on the top of the block, just not getting it onto the star. And then using my sponge dabber, I'm going to dip that in the paint, tap it off a few times. And then I'm going to very carefully just tap paint on the silver, on the star, just tap a little bit of silver on the star. And this way, using my very small sponge dabber, I've been, I can be really precise. So I'm going to get a really nice colour mix that hasn't smudged. So turn that upside down, give it a wiggle and up. So there we have a really nice colour mix where I've used my square sponge for the large area and I've used my sponge dabber. So I've got a really clear contrast. And I'll show you again with the reindeer. So tapping the paint on and as I get to the top where the antlers are being really precise. And one thing I would say is when you're applying multiple colours is sometimes we're a little bit too precise and don't put enough paint on. So you want to find that happy medium between getting enough paint on and not smudging it onto the other colour. So make sure you practice before you do two colour printing and just make sure you're really getting enough paint on the block. So I've got the red body and the silver antlers and turn it upside down. Give it a wiggle and up and you can really clearly again see my lovely two colour printing using my square sponge and my dabbers. I'm also going to show you on to my large cow parsley as well how I do two colour printing as this is a beautiful block to use two colours on. So I'm using my fabric paint at the moment. I'm using Kiwi and Indian Aqua. Now these are just water-based fabric paints. So again, will clean really easily off your equipment. And these are just really lovely paints to work with. So I've got a piece of practice fabric here. So I've just got an old bed sheet that I've ripped up and I always use kind of old fabric that I've got in the cupboard to practice on. And for this, what I'm gonna do is it's always nice to work out which dabbers you want to use. Because I'm doing more detailed work, I'm gonna use a sponge dabber for this project. And you want to make it as easy as you can for yourself. So figure out which dab is gonna work the best. So I'm gonna top I'm gonna tap the kind of you know the seeds bit at the top one color so this will be a good sponge dabber for that and then as the stalk and the kind of stalks here are a little bit thinner i'm going to use the slightly small sponge dabber so i can be quite detailed there so first of all let's start with the khaki and dip your sponge dabber in really tap off the excess so it starts to absorb some of that paint and then i'm going to lightly tap it all over so i'm just going up to the kind of blossom part of the block just very slightly going on to it so that I'm not going to miss putting any paint on. And then I'm going to carefully go down the stalk, get the paint on there. And then with my Indian Aqua, I've got my larger dabber. And then I can just really easily tap this on the top. So it really helps, you know, having a mixture of sizes of dabbers so you can get the right one for the job that you're doing. So I've tapped the blue on the top and the green on my stalk and let's see how this comes out. So I'm gonna turn it upside down, give it a wiggle. Now the top of this block is quite solid, so I'm gonna give that a good wiggle, but the stalk is quite delicate, so I'm just gonna give that a really light push just in order not to smudge it. 
And there we go. Hopefully you can see that's come out lovely with the really clear two colours. So if I show you that again, lightly tapping the green on the stalk, just going carefully down there. And then using my slightly larger sponge dabber for the blossom. And that way I'm getting a really nice clear two colour print. And you don't want it to look too regimented. You don't want to have too much of a straight line of colour mix. You want them to blend a little bit. So this one here and up and there we have a really beautiful two color block printing using my sponge dabbers so let's talk about after you've used your equipment now i know that you guys know in between block printing if you want to change color you just use a dry cloth and wipe the paint off the surface but what to do with them after you finish printing. So now I finish printing, at the end of the day, you want to give them a nice wash. So what I do is just run a bowl of hot soapy water and I'll put them all in there, leave them for a minute, and then I'll get a nail brush. And with the hot soapy water, you can just scrub all over the block and get the paint out of the detail. And that will stop it drying in there and clogging it up. So it'll really keep your blocks really nice and clean and new so that the detail stays very prominent. You don't want to get any paint drying in the kind of very detailed parts of your block because it will start to clog it up. So you want a nail brush and hot soapy water and just give them a good scrub. Dry them off, leave them on the side to dry and then put them away for next time. With your equipment, your sponges and your paint tray, again, you just wash with hot soapy water. What I always suggest is if you have any paint left, what you can do is use your sponge and scrape it back into the pot because you don't want to waste any of your precious paint. So you can scrape that back in and then you can just wash your equipment with hot soapy water, dry it off again and then use it for next time. So it's really simple to keep clean and this equipment and your printing blocks should last you forever as long as you look after them well. You may notice that your foam mat gets a little bit painty, sometimes some of the paint goes through but I wouldn't worry about that, just let it dry and then it'll be absolutely fine when you use it next time. It's quite nice if it gets a bit painty because it looks really artistic. Don't worry about trying to wipe or clean them because the paint won't come off onto your project from your mat. So I hope that's just helped explain a little bit of the equipment that I use and why I use it. You guys may have some of your own techniques at home, which will probably work perfect for you as well. And um, it's just very simple equipment that you've probably got at home. So it's worth digging out of the cupboard because using what I just use here makes your block printing so easy and will really help you get perfect results. So thanks very much for watching. I hope it's been useful. Bye.